Bing! An email popped into my inbox as I was mid-script. It was from my employers at Heaven's Fire Films. Daniel, it began. We know we promised you complete freedom on your show, but dedicating this week's episode to Avengers Infinity War would make us really, really happy. After checking my contract and finding that that happiness wasn't in there, I responded that I was mid-script and trying to avoid that oxygen-sucking behemoth for one week. Thanks for the hints, guys, but you can call me the rebel without a clue. Besides, I wrote, surely my fans would be more interested in knowing that Spamalot, the stage play of legendary film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, is being turned into a film, making it a film based on a play based on a film being written by the guys who made the original film. That's brilliant! Uh, apparently not. Apparently you'd all be more interested in knowing that Avengers made more money in its first few days than Justice League did in its whole run and has made over a billion dollars in the first 11 days. Unconvinced, I responded that I was more interested in telling my audience that the Academy had expelled both Bill Cosby and Roman Polanski for not meeting its standards of conduct, one of which should really have happened before I was born. Although Polanski, who fled the USA and has yet to serve a single day of his sentence, Polanski's attorney, Harlan Braun, tells Vanity Fair that the director is going to appeal the decision. We want due process, Braun said. That's not asking too much of the Academy, is it? In context, Polanski was found guilty in 1977 of having sexual intercourse with a minor. Despite the verdict and the fact that the director fled the country to avoid prison time, the Academy still awarded Polanski the Best Director Trophy for The Pianist in 2003. Braun accuses the Academy of failing to adhere to fair process while handling the case of Polanski's membership. Mr. Polanski was supposed to be given notice and have 10 days to present his side, Braun said. It was a complete debacle in the sense they didn't follow their own rules. They short-circuited it all. It's shocking that they're so unfair. We're going to try to sit down with the Academy and say, hey, look, you guys, follow the rules. Because apparently he's never heard of irony. But came the response, surely you would love to tell people that Avengers, taking over almost all theatre screens in the boring career, has prompted the nation's government to introduce a new law that will prevent a single feature film playing on more than 40% of their total number of cinema slots. In a report from Variety, legislators from South Korea are looking to introduce new laws with regard to the division of theatre screenings in the country following Infinity War taking over 85% of screens nationwide. Lawmaker Cho Sung Rae from the ruling party ex explained that a brand new law that would regulate these things is currently under review. Once it's officially approved and executed, it will limit the cinema chains to devote a maximum of 40% of their screens to one film. The revised laws and promotion of film and video that are currently pending at the National Assembly restricts conglomerates own multiplexes from allocating more than 40% of their screening slots to the same film. At this point, legal institutional measures for screen monopoly seem necessary, he said. That is a cool story, I conceded. But surely people would be more interested in the story of an autistic woman being frog-marched out of a screening at the British Film Institute for laughing too hard at legendary comedy The Good, The Bad and The Ugly as well as suffering abuse from a patron who got her thrown out while suffering no penalty themselves, leading to murmurs of a boycott of one of London's most prestigious cinemas. A terse email explained that they would rather I expanded on the story that the twists in Infinity War are all allegedly permanent and not subject to change. Writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely were adamant that the Infinity War deaths are real, warning fans that the sooner you accept that, the sooner you will be able to move on to the next stage of grief. This scared fans who have been hoping that the fallen heroes could still come back. After all, many of them are already confirmed for their own sequel films. But new comments from the Rousseau brothers imply that the death count may not be as definitive as Marcus and McFeeling originally insinuated. During an interview with WTOP, the Rousseaus were coy when asked about anything regarding the multiple deaths toward the end of Infinity War, with Anthony saying that they can't comment on the matter with a knowing grin on his face as expected. But it's interesting for him to give a non-committal answer, differing from the writer's earlier remarks, that sounded pretty definitive. Now I absolutely believe this because I was born yesterday. But I run a new show and rumours last I checked weren't news. Okay then I was told. What about the news that according to the Times of India, the body of 43 year old on the screen was discovered after the screening because cinemas believed that he was waiting for the post credit sequence that is traditionally included in Marvel movies. When the film ended, officials removed the man's 3D glasses to discover that he had passed away with his eyes open. Although a post-mortem is yet to be carried out, it is believed that Mr. Bashar, a construction worker, died from a suspected cardiac arrest. But I was going to go with the fact that two bodyguards are suing their former employer Johnny Depp over unpaid wages and for exposing them to unsafe working conditions reports people. The two former employees, Eugene Arola and Miguel Sanchez, filed a complaint in Los Angeles court on Tuesday alleging that the actor did not comply with state employer agreements. Though the two men began protecting Depp through an independent security company in 2013, they transferred over to part of his in-house security team in 2016. Around this time, they alleged his behaviour changed. 
Checks from Depp's payroll would be missing overtime and rest pay, and the duo didn't receive their mandatory meal and rest breaks. They would also be required to do jobs not normally required of security detail, like driving the actor and his family or watching over Depp's minor child as the primary caretaker. As People points out, Depp's youngest child is John Christopher Depp III, who is 16 years old. The suit also alleges that Depp made them complicit in his legal activity. They say they were forced to protect Depp from himself and his vices while in public, becoming caretakers for him. As an example, they mentioned one night at a club when they had to alert their boss to illegal substances visible on his face and person. They said they had to protect onlookers from noticing Depp's condition and from seeing Pirates of the Caribbean 6, The Curse of the Unpaid Gas Bill. Then, to finish up with My Employers Continued Unabated, you can tell the heartwarming story that Black Panther has been nominated for a grand total of seven awards at the 2018 MTV Movie and TV Awards, and surely this can only be the start of an amazing King's Ransom worth of awards. Thanks guys, but I was going to finish up with the terrifying in fact that Harvey Weinstein demanded that the Lord of the Rings be cut into a single two-hour film, and if Peter Jackson didn't like it, then he was going to bring in Quentin Tarantino. Because Tarantino and Lord of the Rings go together like, um, Van Forstick and sequels? Anyway, I'll see you guys next week. I'm Daniel, it's been Movie Wrap News. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and consider supporting us on Patreon. contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.